Is this an easy trick to get a juicier flat on your brisket every time? In this video, I'm cooking a brisket with a sponge towel under the flat of the brisket to see if it prevents it from drying out and guarantees a juicy result. So let's get smoking. Welcome barbecue friends, my name is Steve Gao, and in this show I do crazy barbecue experiments you would never do at home so you can learn from my trial and error. Here's something I hear from my viewers all the time. Steve, I cooked a brisket and my point was perfectly juicy, but my flat was dry, what am I doing wrong? It's a common problem that a lot of people have when cooking brisket. The point muscle over here is a lot thicker and it's more marbled with intramuscular fat, so it usually comes out very juicy, but the flat muscle over here is much thinner and leaner, so as you might expect, it turns out drier and less juicy. Fortunately, there's a lot of techniques to prevent this from happening. You can wrap your brisket earlier in the cook so that it loses less moisture from evaporative cooling. You can cook it at a lower temperature so it cooks more evenly. You can foil boat it so it braises in its own juices. You can finish at a lower temperature like 190 degrees before it gets really dry and then finish it with a long hold at 150 degrees overnight. That's what I do with my briskets. You could try injecting it or you could just look for a brisket with a really thick well marbled flat or because the flat tapers off to a thinner edge you could simply cut back a lot of the flat until you're only left with a smaller but much thicker flat. You could also spritz the brisket during the early part of the cook. In his book Franklin Smoke Aaron Franklin recommends spritzing only the very edges of the flat early in the cook because it cools down the flat and allows it to cook more evenly with the rest of the brisket thus preventing it from drying out. But even using these techniques it's still very easy to get a dry flat especially one that is very thin and not as well marbled. So how do we eliminate the guesswork and get a juicy flat every time? That's something I've been thinking about a lot as I experiment with new techniques. And one of the techniques that really caught my eye recently was from Zilla's Barbecue Pit on Instagram, which I'll link in the description section below. The pit master at Zilla's Barbecue Pit in Nashville uses cardboard underneath his briskets to prevent the flats from drying out. After seeing he was doing this, I did a bit of research and I found out from a Stephen Raichlin blog that another pit master named Billy Durney of Hometown Barbecue in Brooklyn also uses cardboard under his briskets, at least when he was interviewed back in 2019. So presumably what the cardboard does is it shields the underside of the brisket from the direct heat to prevent it from drying out. But one of the things that cardboard is particularly well suited for is absorbing moisture. So it absorbs the moisture from the brisket and prevents moisture loss via dripping and evaporative cooling from the underside of the brisket, as well as acting as a better thermal barrier because water not only has a higher thermal capacity than other barriers, such as foil, for example, it also has a maximum temperature of the boiling point of water, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas foil can increase much higher in temperature. Another way that cardboard could act Act as a better thermal barrier is if it's wrapped in foil. For example, if we wrap this cardboard in foil, now we have the foil that is reflecting heat off of it, but we also have an air gap in the center of the foil that's acting as a thermal barrier, similar to how you have insulation in your walls. There's an air gap with some sort of material in between it, and it acts as a better thermal barrier than just a thin sheet of metal. But this test is for another video. In this video, I'm assuming cardboard works because it absorbs and it holds onto moisture. This represents water that might be draining out of the brisket, or perhaps I'm spritzing the brisket and this is sort of splash over from spritzing it. It's absorbing into the cardboard and soaking into it. I think that's a logical theory anyway, and I could have conducted the test in this video with actual cardboard, but cardboard is pretty thin. It doesn't hold on to a ton of moisture, and most importantly, it breaks down and crumbles apart eventually when it's soaked for long enough. So I wanted to find a better material, something like a cloth or a sponge, and luckily there's something called a sponge cloth. It's relatively inexpensive, it absorbs a ton of moisture, and it lays flat under the brisket, so I think it would be a perfect material. So I'm gonna smoke two briskets in this video. One of them is gonna have the sponge towels underneath it that I pre-soaked with water, and the other one isn't going to have anything underneath it at all, and we'll see if the one with the sponge towels underneath it comes out juicier in the flat. I think that if it does work and it does come out juicier, then we could logically say from inference that cardboard would probably work to some extent because it does the same thing as these sponge towels just to a lesser extent. And if it doesn't work at all, I think it's safe to say that the cardboard probably doesn't do anything. That's just the logical inferences that I'm making. You might come to a different conclusion. So for this experiment, I'm starting with two choice grade briskets and slathering them with some Golden Mountain seasoning sauce, which is basically a more malty and sugary version version of soy sauce with a bit more umami flavor. I've heard rumors that some Texas barbecue joints use this 
this stuff, so I've been experimenting with it to see how it tastes, and it's very tasty. Next, I'm seasoning the briskets with Smoke Trails BBQ Brisket Rub. I like to really layer on a lot of this rub. It's actually designed to be layered on really thick, and it has less salt in it, so it allows you to put more rub on the brisket and get more texture and more bark. Now, normally I like to have two similarly sized briskets for an experiment, but in this video, the experimental sponge towel brisket is much smaller in weight, and it has a much thinner flat as well than the control brisket. That way, if the thinner experimental brisket turns out juicier in the flat than the control brisket, I'll really know that the sponge towels had some sort of effect because the experimental brisket flat was super thin. I'm chopping up a few splits of wood now. They can be pretty big splits because I'm just starting up the firebox at this point and I'm not really that concerned about temperature swings. And then I'm placing them down over some charcoal and I'm using my Oklahoma Joe's charcoal starter to light them up. I'm going to let them burn down into a nice coal bed for about 30 minutes. Then after I've got a coal bed, I'm gonna start adding small splits every 20 minutes to maintain a steady 250 degrees at great level. Now I'm laying down four soaked sponge towels in a kind of square formation, just big enough to cover the footprint of the brisket flat. And then I'm placing the brisket flat over top of them. I curled the edges of the towels underneath themselves so they just better conform with the brisket and take up less space in the smoker. Then the control brisket goes on the smoker and I'm going to let them both smoke at 250 for the first five hours. And then after five hours, I'll bump up the temperatures to 300 for the remainder of the cook. Every 30 minutes or so during the first five hours of the cook, I'm opening the smoker and I'm spritzing both of the briskets. And with the experimental brisket, I'm also spritzing the edges of the sponge cloth to keep it wet. As I press into it, you can see how it holds on to a lot of moisture, which is a good thing. After around 10 hours, I rotated the briskets around with the flats facing the firebox and really cranked up the heat to 325 degrees. I'm going to take these briskets to a higher finishing temperature than I normally do and expose the flats to a really high temperature intentionally to try to dry them out. I'm doing this because I really want to put the sponge towels to the test. Now, after 12 hours, the briskets have hit around 200 plus degrees internal. Again, I took them to a much higher temperature than 190, which is the normal finishing temperature that I aim for. So to recap, the sponge towel brisket is smaller. It has a thinner flat. Both briskets have been overcooked and cooked with their flats to the fire for the last part of the cook. So this is a really extreme example of where you might get a dry flat to try to test out whether the sponge towels actually work. And finally, I'm removing the briskets from the smoker and wrapping them in foil with some clarified butter and beef tallow. Then they go in the warming oven at 150 for the next 18 hours until dinner the next day. All right, guys, it is the next day and I have the control brisket here. This is the brisket that we didn't cook with the sponge cloth underneath it. Now what I'm looking for here is any signs of dryness in the flat. And as I kind of squeeze this area of the flat together on the thinner side of the flat, it does seem pretty hard. It seems pretty crispy and it seems pretty dry just going by feel. So that's not a good sign looking at this control brisket. Over here on the point of the flat, it's kind of hard, it's kind of dry. So what I'm gonna do is usually I just cut right down the center here and then I start my slices from the flat and then cut parallel to get my slices off the point. But what I'm gonna do here is start making slices directly from the flat. And for this video, I usually don't use this, but I'm gonna use a serrated slicing knife. I find they kind of tear briskets apart and mess up my cutting boards, so I don't use them a lot, but a lot of people in Texas at popular barbecue joints swear by these things. So I'm gonna try it again and see if I can change my mind. So just slicing into the flat here, we can take a look at the very tip of the flat and you can see that there is rendered fat and collagen coming out of it, but it is quite dry. So I'll pull that apart. It's very crispy, very smoky, but I had to go off camera and spit that out because it's way too dry. So this flat is very crispy. And if you look at another slice, it's looking pretty dry. You can see how it just kind of crumbles apart. Crumbly is good sometimes if it's crumbly and juicy. That can be a good flavor experience, but in this situation, this is a pretty dry flat. Okay, you can see how it's tearing away now. So this is an extremely dry flat. It's kind of like beef jerky on the bottom. I can just peel that right off. That's no bueno, guys. That does not look good for the flat of a brisket that I want to be turning out. So the very edge of this flat is very dry. Let's see if the center of the brisket is any better. This is where I normally cut my briskets. And you guys can see that it's very juicy. So we are gonna get some good flat slices from this one, but the edges of this flat are very dry. So as far as control briskets go, this couldn't have been better because we have a really dry flat brisket 
And now we're gonna look at the experimental brisket and we're gonna see if that is any less dry. Hopefully it's nice and juicy. All right, here is the experimental brisket. I'm just going to remove it all the way from the foil. And I'm gonna take all of the rendered beef tallow and the butter away from it. Normally I'd slather all of that on the cutting board and I would slather each slice with it, but I wanna see how juicy the meat is just by itself before I start adding liquid fat to it. So let's start by testing out the edges of the flat. And as I poke and prod around the edges, I'm immediately noticing that it's not as hard as the control brisket was. It is still pretty tough just around the very edges of the flat, but the very toe or the tip of the flat here, which is what I would expect to be super dry, is actually quite tender. So those are some promising results. Let's start with a cut right here, just the very tip. So this should be the driest part. And that's actually looking quite juicy. So we'll pull this apart. Okay, I can actually eat that and swallow it, whereas I had to spit out the very tip of the other flat. So that's promising. I'm gonna keep making some slices. Okay, so as we go in further, it looks a little bit dry, but it's tender. And it's still edible. It's actually very edible. It tastes really good. And if we slather some tallow on that, that's gonna be a really nice slice and you could serve that up to your family. Whereas the other slices of the flat of the control brisket were pretty much inedible. I would not serve them up even slathered in tallow. It's not the most juicy flat that I've ever cooked in my life, but it's much juicier than the control brisket is. I kind of don't mind the serrated knife, by the way. It's, uh, it's a little bit easier to cut slices. I find with the straight edge knife, you kind of have to be careful with the bark at the very top. And then you have to make a lot of strokes. Whereas with the serrated knife, you get a little bit more friction and you're able to cut those perfect quarter inch slices a little bit more easily. So here's another slice of the tip of the flat. I can pull it apart like this, pulls apart really easily. And it's really good. A little bit of tallow slathered on that slice and it would be perfect. So now slicing right in the center of the brisket. Give you guys another look down here. It's looking really juicy. So conclusions, even though the experimental brisket had a thinner flat and it was much smaller in size and weight than the control brisket, the flat turned out much juicier. It was still a little bit dry because I intentionally overcooked both of these briskets to see if we could get a juicy flat with the sponge towels. And even when I overcooked it, it still turned out really juicy. With the control brisket, the flat was almost inedible for the last one third of the flat. The rest of the brisket was pretty decent, but still pretty dry. But the flat of the experimental brisket was totally edible, and if I slathered it with some tallow, I would definitely serve it up to my friends and family, and they would love it. So will a sponge towel or something similar placed under the flat of the brisket turn out a juicier flat? I think it definitely will based on this experiment. It worked. The brisket with the sponge towel placed under the flat was juicier in the flat, and it was more edible than the control brisket, even though the control brisket had a thicker flat. And given the results of this video, I think something that is food safe and clean and water absorbing, such as a dishcloth or, or maybe even clean cardboard could actually work in a similar way and could help you get juicier flats. And as a bonus, I thought that doing that would kind of ruin the bark on the bottom of the brisket. But if you look at the bottom of this flat, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty dark to me. So thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Oklahoma Joe's YouTube channel. Check out my channel, Smoke Trails Barbecue, for more awesome barbecue experiments. I will see you in the next video, and until then, happy smoking.